Peace, Chiefs and Dears. It's Bronze Bird here with another video. Before I begin, like and subscribe. Thank you. So I know this week it's been pretty tough for people getting into this conversation about takeoffs, takeoff, and about how so-called Black people in particular is tired of so-called Black people or specifically so-called Black men dying in the streets, whether it be over this situation with a dice game and uh, other things happening and, you know, all these different things. What I will say is this. I think a lot of people have an understanding. There has been noteworthy content creators that have made this a point that when it comes to the music industry, of course, that it is a realm of Luciferianism and also having to deal with exposing all of the sins to promote that music over and over and over again to the average consumer. Takeoff was no different. I did, uh, you know, this is my third installment of the video that I'm doing over him. And, um, you know, I see a lot of rage that's happening with this now, this talk about how the community needs to do better. We need to stop the reckless violence and all these different things. And look, I know a lot of people mean well. I know there are organizations out there that want to see the so-called Black man do better than what he's doing right now. Um, a lot of inner working needs to happen before these conversations starts, however. Uh, I'm not one to put people down for the sole purpose that I see nothing in them. I put them down because I see something in them. See, there's a lot of things that happen with the so-called Black man. The so-called Black man does not honor the other so-called Black man, even if you're talking on a perspective of coming from urban communities. I bet you any of you brothers right now can tell me an example where you've just been minding your own business and you look, you take one look at a so-called black man for one second, he's ready to fight you. Or a uh, so-called black man is ready to start some drama with you over some nonsense. So-called black men do need to do better, but um, this video that I'm gonna be showing you today that I'm gonna re be reviewing is about a record executive giving his point of view about the whole entire thing with rap. So I'm gonna give my commentary on it so, Pete. Fair use. I of seeing that a rapper from Migos died, I just wanted to go ahead and make a video about something I have a unique experience in. So I directed a bunch of rappers, people like Gucci Mane, Snoop Dogg, you know, uh, Lil Yachty, the list goes on and on and on, okay? I learned a lot of things um, and I have left the industry um, largely over my political beliefs, but there is something I wanna impart to people to hopefully, you know, make some sort of change happen. So I have a challenge to rappers and I know some of you still follow me, I know a bunch of the celebrity blogs still follow me from trying to get news from music videos and things like that. So here's the truth. The truth is this, a bunch of young black male rappers keep dying. You know who's not dying? Record executives. The record executives that push for them to continue to make songs and create a culture that is obsessed with death, drugs, and sex. Now, my thing to that is, that is a fact, right? But there's a lot of angles I had thought about when reviewing this video in order for me to make a point like this. I think what it is, is that they take the advantage of a, a lot of naive children or young so-called Black men in particular when it comes to signing these contracts and putting them on a scene when it comes to rap and all these different things. Now, we have to understand at the end of the day, they are the ones that push what is cool, what is acceptable, what is the new hotness, who is the new hot artist and all this other stuff. Why they particularly go for gangs is because gangs are usually aligned with a lot of the old makings of masonry. And also the fact that a lot of these signs that they're doing has to still do with uh, Luciferianism. So the thing about it is when talking about rap, why it aligns with the gang culture is because it aligns to their old traditions, it aligns to their old ways about doing things. It's just repackaged and then they made sure to boil it down to the so-called black man and the so-called black community. So 
when having this conversation, yes, this dude is absolutely right. Of course, of course, he's a record executive, an ex record record executive, of course. But my whole entire understanding on it is is to get the ones that don't know any better, the ones that you know is in need, basically, so that you can primarily quote unquote take them out the hood, but also have a trick up your sleeve in order to abandon them once they are disposable, unless. They fulfill your promises. They keep going on and doing this trash ass music. And, you know, obviously other rituals that come involved with it as well. Period. The industry is obsessed with it, but those record executives, they're not done because they don't push this culture on their own people, but they're encouraging you to push it on yours and they're paying you handsomely to do it. Well, with that being said, it kind of reminds me of the old saying, especially to the late rapper, uh, Biggie Notorious B.I.G. Never get high off your own supply. It goes with everything when it comes to a business. You sell a product, but you don't utilize the product, right? You know, just like I remember there was a story like maybe about a couple of years ago where it was like the CEO of Pepsi and um, CEO of Pepsi and I think um, Mark Zuckerberg uh, there was a story about him where he doesn't use um, technology the same way we use it. And then when it came to the CEO of Pepsi, I believe the woman that's in charge of the, you know, with Pepsi Co and stuff like that running the company, she doesn't even feed her own family Pepsi products. Or just like when it comes to drugs as well, you know, you sell crack, but you don't utilize crack. I mean, a lot of a lot of people know about those hood movies in the '90s, namely New Jack City where, you know, the CMB brothers, you know, they were supposed to be smart and they wasn't supposed to do drugs and stuff like that. But the, the light-skinned character in the movie wind up being addicted to crack. And then he was starting to feel some type of way because the the brother played the um, Wesley Snipes character, basically started fucking his woman and he started feeling some type of way about it and stuff like that. He, she was a whore in general. But to go back to the point, the lesson is never get high off your own supply. So record executives is like, look, listen, we know that we can groom this rapper to go ahead and go with the agendas we want, do exactly what we say. We pay him or her cash out to, to rap about the songs that we want them to rap about or sing about. And that's how we do that there. Now, I'm not going to be playing this music when I get home because I know it's damaging and I don't want that type of vibe around me or my family, but for other people, you people are dumb. You will respond in gesture and in kind to this music that I put out here. You will. And if, any got, if anybody got a problem with it, oh well, we will bash you because you know what's up, what's going on with us. The reality is I know a lot of you. A lot of you are good people, your family guys. You're not the image that you put out there to the world. Why? Why don't you be the example? Stand up. I challenge you. Be the example. Make music about the culture you want to see. Don't just get online today and talk about how, you know, whenever a rapper makes it, his own people take him down. Don't just make those videos. Don't be sad. Don't rest in peace. None of that stuff. Well, this is the thing. I actually had a conversation about this yesterday. I'm going to, I'm going to align it to what, the, what this man is talking about. So... I made a video a couple of months back where I was talking about drill rap and about how controversial it was becoming. And so the radio stations in New York was like, yo, we not, they threatened to say, yo, we not going to be playing drill rap. And then the mayor, Mayor Adams decided to say, hey, we going to get rid of that drill rap too. And in which, and still to this point, there is still some stuff going on with Mayor Adams where he's like, yo, look, listen, we not going to be playing that drill rap or stuff like that. You cannot rap that at this concert. And the thing about it is there's been too many times there has been a lot of movements to say, yo, we don't allow that music in there. And, and it is, and I'm not trying to make it in a way where it's bad. It is for a good cause. It is for a good reason. But the problem is, is that the stimuli of a lot of people that's in that mindset, they don't want to let it go. I mean, even personally on my day-to-days, I would see people when they had threatened to get rid of drill rap, it was this um, older cat, this older man that lived up the block from where I was living. And he started to blare that drill music outside of his truck and had like one of the girls dancing out in the streets to the drill music. 
and it, it shared that whole entire rebellious i don't give a fuck attitude the problem is a lot of people when they're in a certain environment have a very kiddish mindset they don't understand the impact all they can say is i can blast whatever i want they don't try to understand how it's impacting other people how it's impacting the youth what are they thinking and then they be surprised when you hear stories about how dudes got the drop on this dude or the fact of the matter that I seen in the news the other day, which may be related to drill rap, maybe it may not be, that you're starting to see these increases of killings where a, a young boy that was 15 years old got killed on a far Rockaway bound A train merely over a fucking argument, over some dumb shit. And these children are directly just killing each other days in and days out. And when you watch these drill videos, they ain't care about nothing because the gang culture has shifted. Before, the gang culture was all about that protection and then you go to the OGs for respect. Nowadays, these OGs don't give a damn and these young cats don't give a damn. So they go in ahead and causing violence and just being like, we do whatever we want. Doing the whole entire wrong gang signs, wearing the wrong colors and basically making a mockery off of what the gang culture and history was. So. Be the change you want to see. Inspire it in your community. Reach out to other rappers and say, we have to stop. We're being used. You've been used for a long time. You know, they create this paradigm to make you believe that you're so important and your celebrity status is worth so much. But in truth, you're a pawn in their game and you always have been. Yeah, and I mean, even to certain quote unquote conscious rappers, they they are pawns too. I think right now it's just so funny having this conversation about, you know, regulation or how we need to do better for the community and all this other stuff. I'm I'm not against it. I will say that I'm not against it. But the problem is is that you're trying to fight a battle on these different fronts where uh people especially people of color do not want change, right? Like I'm not the type that wants to hear music that's all lovey-dovey, kumbaya, you know what I mean? I like to have fun, but there needs to be some type of way where we regulate the music, where it's not trying to impose, like, I'm really going to shoot dudes out here, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that. And, and, and let, let me say this as well. Sometimes you got to think about it this way. There's not a lot of people who can be mature enough to watch something or play something and not let it affect them. I think there are certain people out here who let this rap music get to them and be like, well, I, I like getting into killings. I like getting guns. I like shooting. I like doing this. Or like when people play Grand Theft Auto or same thing, I want to really steal a car. I really want to do this. The mindset is always important in these different things. That's why a lot of these companies know to put out music, video games, and more just like that, because it, it gets into the psyche of someone's brain. And more spiritually, spiritually, that's a lot of like, soulless stuff that's getting into your mind to make you believe in bad things so we can go in a whole entire conversation with that but get the point the government has wanted to hold down communities of people in different ways through different methods for a very long time their method in the black community has been to use entertainment to create a culture obsessed with death drugs sex and money so that they could create a false paradigm of what happiness and what success really was. And in doing so, they created a world that also made people more dependent on government. And as Yeah, well, it was a demonic world. Also, the fact of the matter that you own nothing, so you have to depend on me to get from point A to B. So it's easier to control you. And that's what it is with rap music. Most of the time, it's easier to control so-called Black people. You know, as you see this whole entire thing where you have two different agendas going on, where you have so-called Black women that's entertaining the whole entire thought culture and entertaining the idea of aborting, because we just seen that song that went in with, um, you know, uh, the song that went in that did a remix of the FNF song by that chick Glorilla. <laughs> I don't mean, even if you listen to that song by Glorilla, the original one, she sounds hurt. She was able to, to basically give out her pain on a song because she had a bad relationship and it went sour. And they enjoy shit like this. Being able to take a negative situation and then say, hey, you know what? Let's put it in a song. And then on the men's side, 
obviously the gang culture, the whole entire alpha dog, this this false sense of masculinity. And a lot of these men that believe if they do something like this or they do something like that, that's masculinity. You know, they also talk about how these men that be having his money in the videos, that that be play money. We went through over this so many times, man. A lot of what you're seeing is a play out loud in the real world. And a lot of these people are characters. They are not what they appear to be. You have these clownish as island boys that do the same shit, rolling around with these thoughts and sitting up there talking about, yeah, I'm an island boy. And then, you know, a couple of more of those, those people out there that's doing things for the glam and the glitz. But at the end of the day, they are lonely. They are in debt up to their ass and they're, they're getting fucked over by this industry and they love it because the industry has a lot of these people on loans. That's why not a lot of these artists are able to go past even one album. If they're lucky enough, they can have a career that can span for three to four years. But otherwise than that, if they're not doing any investments, if they're not trying to do no collaborations with any companies, namely any fashion brands, they're done. So they can, so the record labels can collect their residuals right back because they know that artists has failed to read their contract, number one. And number two, they're gullible. That's why they always try to target the young generation. Right now, they're going to focus on Generation A, loosely Generation Z as well, right? Generation Z is the most important. So, of course, by guiding in the whole entire TikTok and, you know, social media and stuff like that, that's what they need. That's why it's, it's, it's impressionable to get the teenagers and the ones in their young 20s. Once you hit like 30 and stuff like that, they don't really care about you. They don't. The result gave themselves more power. The record executives that push you to do this, to go and continue to profit off the backs of your work, they're in cahoots with the elite. They're in cahoots with the government. They want you to think you're important, but in truth, you're just doing their dirty work for them. So stop. They've empowered you in ways that are real. You have an audience, you have platforms, you have the ability to make change. So go against the grain together. They're more afraid of you all together standing up and creating a new culture that's built around family, faith, freedom, doing the right thing, valuing life than they are of anything else. So I challenge you, use your power to do the right things. If you continue to do the same thing you've done, more rappers like this are going to die. How many have to die before you change the culture? And let me tell you something else. There's a reason the record labels pay us more to do rap videos. They don't tell you that, do they? Do they tell you that they pay us more to do your videos? Because they do. They do it because they know it's more dangerous. They do it because they know it's more difficult. And they do it because, frankly, there's a lot of money laundering involved. Those labels wash a bunch of money through. We don't do it, but we know the labels are doing it 100%. And anyway, while I would add this, this just, just came to my mind as well. It's a great return on investment. Uh, a dude that didn't read his contract, and I'm not saying all of them don't read their contract. I'm not going to say that, but let's just say it is an artist that's getting put on right now that's been thirsty in the game. You know, he's in his 20s, impressionable. He, you know, he raps just the way that they like. They get a ghostwriter and they'd be like, yeah, you know, this is a song for him. It's a great return on investment. And if he does actually have gang ties and stuff like that, it's perfect. It's the perfect concoction. So they're able to go ahead and say, you know what, we're going to get this money back. You know, we're going to have him be in this little beef, this orchestrated beef with this artist. He's from this gang set and he's from this gang set. They beefing, they all this, they all that. You know, um, yeah, let's have them pull up to a video shoot or let's just where, where they they might know of it. They might know like, oh, they he might threaten to come to the video shoot. Oh, shit, let's do it. I mean, the funny thing about it is, is that so many movies have detailed and foreshadowed a lot of these events that take on today, that take place today, excuse me. And, you know, one of the movies I really thought about, which is so funny to me, like I really, really thought about, was that movie CB4 in 1993, famously known with uh, Chris Rock and, you know, Charlie Murphy. And um, the reason I thought about that movie is because it's a, the existence of the, the two different worlds. The ones that's from the hood, i.e. Charlie Murphy, and then 
Chris Rock's character that's from the suburbs, but wants to be a rapper. So he wants to put on a facade, wants to put on the whole entire bravado, like, yeah, I'm this, I'm that, I'm gangster, I don't give a fuck, I curse out bitches, I do this, I do that. But he doesn't live like that, you understand? And so that's what I took from, it's more that I took from the movie, but on a surface level, that's one of the things that I had thought about. You know, these dudes might not even come from that type of lifestyle, but then they get involved in it and then they become this whole entire image that's been crafted by the industry. So they're able to spew out garbage because, you know, hey, we want to excite ourselves. We want this element of surprise. So let's go ahead and start doing this and see how far we can take it. And they wind up making dough off of it. They wind up getting exposure. But where does that exposure go in the end? Probably death, sacrifice, and um, just ultimately a bad, bad place. So being disposed after a while, if you aren't able to recoup that money from that album you made or them ticket sales you made out them shows, you understand? Okay, they're then taking the money off the top end and you see on your royalty check, oh, they spent 150000 on this video. Did they? Because we didn't see 150000 Okay, so, and to who? Their friend's company? A lot of times that's the case. Same thing with insurance companies. They charge us more to insure your videos. And it's because they know the culture that's been created. They know that the only possibility of a music video being shot up is on a rap video. And that's the truth. So change the culture. You have the power. Your people deserve it. Hey guys. In And that's the end of the video, but um, something that I wanted to take in time with digesting this whole entire takeoff situation, in which I did mention, this obviously did seem like a ritual that was set. Um, and from my previous videos, I did make note of that. But even going off the surface of talking about a so-called Black man being senselessly shot by people as reckless as a dice game, the, the thing about culture, I think people need to redefine what culture is, especially when it comes to the quote unquote hip hop culture, because, because even in its time of inception, it was always made to go corporate, number one. And number two, even the founders had some type of hand in being affiliated with the elite. So I'm not saying they need to be called out and they need to be whistleblowers, but let's just talk about the black on black violence and the culture that happens with the so-called black people. It's probably going to take a lot of people to rail back against music that's harmful, which I feel like a large majority of so-called black people don't want to do. Then you also have to realize who's also taking that music in stride and listening to it every day, suburban kids. Those are also the ones that want to consume that music as well. So there's many angles I can hit with it. But the point is, yes, be the change you want to see in your community. But it also takes the older generation that I sometimes feel like is trying to appeal to the young generation. So they want to know about the newest hot videos and the newest songs and stuff like that. And the OGs don't give a fuck. So they just feel like, you know what, what if this is what the kids like, I'm going to get, I'm going to get on that wave too. And the problem is, is that when you hear from certain older cats, they want to sit up there and say, as long as it's keeping them off the streets and as long as it's not making them do anything and blah, 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 it's all good. And I said, that's exactly the problem. The lyrics and the content is the stuff that we usually critique. So by you sitting up there saying, well, it gets them off the street because they in the studio, you're rapping. These children are rapping things that's getting other people that want to go on the streets and continue the lifestyles that they're continuing. So who's really winning and who's really helping at the end of the day? And I'll leave you with this message. Who is it helping and who is it hurting? Think about that. Peace.